to b3, rook to b8, rook to b4, and b7. Now, generally speaking, you always want to have your rook behind the pawn in a rook endgame. So black is feeling kind of good about his active rook. It's hitting an unguarded pawn on d4, and it makes sure that the b-pawn can't turn into a queen. The white rook can only protect this pawn by standing exactly here, where it is, on b8. The second he moves away, the pawn will fall. But this is one of those positions where generics don't really tell the whole truth. Because if you look closer, the black rook is really not any more mobile than white's. In fact, black can't even take this pawn on d4. Because if he does, then the rook will sacrifice itself on f8 with check, and when bishop captures rook, then pawn goes to b8, queens with check. Well, only with check if the king captures, but anyway. The, well, to be fair, queen and two pawns versus rook, bishop and two pawns, that might still just be a draw, but I still like white's chances quite a lot there. There's play in that position. So the black rook needs to stay on the b-file which means he will eventually need the help of either the bishop or the king to get that rook away from b8 and be able to capture that pawn. He could, for instance, try to play something like... Well, let's look at a variation. Rook to b5, and then try to take the bishop all the way over here and push away the rook. Uh, well, it's white's move, so let's just make, I don't know, some generic move for him. Thing is that white has this nice resource, rook h8. Now the threat is b8 queens, so black almost has to take it, but then Rook checks, and when the king moves away, rook takes rook. So that's no fun. Let's revert to the position after b7. We can also note that the remaining pawns here, the black pawns, are both on light squares. Now, traditionally, in a bishop endgame, you want to have your pawns on the opposite color than your bishop, because otherwise they'll just get in the way, they'll impede the, the, the movement of the piece. But in this case, uh, it means that the king can't really walk away and help out over here either, because these pawns will be undefended. It'll be impossible to keep them. If the king were to come all the way over here, then the rook would go to g8 and just gobble these pawns up, or at least one of them. And that may well be enough. So, I really don't know what black should try here. Maybe something like g5. Then if f takes g, then... Let's have a look at that, just for fun. Now, if f takes g then the rook can take with check. King moves in, rook goes back. Now, g6 check just runs into king g7. And there's really nothing fun going on here. White is in Zugzwang. This is terrible. White has the compulsion to move and there are no good moves. Okay. Trying to prepare the check with king h6, that's that's even worse. That just walks into a mate. Oh, this is dreadful. Luckily enough, no one saw this idea g5 in the game. It's probably a dreadful idea anyway. I'm just too tired to see why. So, 
as it was actually played. Bishop to f8. Now that's probably going to h6 and allow the king to start making his way over here. I'm really just probing here. I just wanted to see what black would do. Now if bishop h if the bishop goes back to e7 check then I can't really make any headway. If I go in then the rook drops back and threatens mate. Um, so I would have to go back to g4. Maybe this is the point where white really has nothing better than to allow black to repeat the position and uh, just draw the game. I don't know. But black plays king g7. And this loses. It's it's a big red flag. Now after the game I see now that the proper and easy win is the simple rook e8. It threatens b8 queens and it also threatens to start munching these pawns. So after rook takes b7 then rook takes e6. And everything just falls. There is uh, there is no way that Black's bishop can withstand what will essentially become three protected passed pawns. That cannot be survivable. I wish I had stopped, uh, you know, at this position and seen it. But sadly, while playing a game, it's very easy to just get lost in your own variations. When black played his king to g7, I didn't reassess anything. I just played what I'd already decided to play ages ago, when I sort of first mentally saw this position and kind of hoped for it. And that is the, uh, well, for him anyway, reasonably surprising sacrifice. Rook takes bishop. King takes rook. King f6, this is key. Uh, white only has time to capture one of these black pawns while black snatches up the b pawn. And the e6 pawn is the important one because that pawn in itself just prevents all the white pawns from moving. I told you this push e4 to e5 was really ugly. If black tries to hold on to the d6 pawn with rook b6, then we just play b8 queens with check rook takes queen and then king takes pawn anyway so rook takes pawn king takes pawn king g7 no, that's just nonsensical this is the losing move I think black had to check on b6 forcing the white king to d5 further away and letting black come into f7 now after king g7 it's now it's just too late there's nothing that can stop the steamroller of pawns just marching down the board uh, check just push the pawn rook sidestep king moves down check pawn moves in between yeah we, you sort of see where this is going and finally queens takes takes I don't know why he kept on playing here. I'm I'm assuming he thought that uh, my play had been so bad that I'd find some kind of way to stalemate him and just put him in a position where he had no legal moves, which just draws the game. But it's a pretty easy mate to see, even for me. And um, there you have it. An absolutely spectacularly lower level game analyzed and annotated for your enjoyment. I bet you didn't know that when you woke up this morning, did you? Anyway, thanks for watching, you poor misguided creatures. Leave me a comment if you're up to it. Please don't, if you're just going to say something nasty. <laughs>